Sister Morgan and I recently returned from serving as military relations missionaries in the Tokyo South Mission with our assignment at Fleet Activities Yokosuka, Japan, which is a base about 40 miles south of Tokyo at the entrance of Tokyo Bay. <clears throat> We've been told it's the largest forward deployed U.S. naval base in the world. We were not allowed to proselyte on the military installation, nor were we given a checklist of things to do other than go find some place to serve, leave a good impression, and establish bridges and relationships with those who lived and served on the base. So we served with the American Red Cross, the USO, and mostly with the Navy Marine Corps Relief Society, which offers financial education and zero interest loans to sailors and Marines in financial trouble. I served as a caseworker and Sister Morgan as a client services associate. We interviewed, educated, and made those loans. It was a very rewarding experience. We were allowed by the society to wear our missionary name tags. Not all organizations allowed that, but they did. And we were grateful for that because our name tags were opportunities for introductions. People would see them and ask who we were. Too often, they were members of the church who would say, I'm a member of the church, but I'm not active and I don't want to be involved. Occasionally, we were able to invite them to our meetings, nevertheless. <clears throat> I would like to share two experiences that uh, we had while we were on our mission. <coughs> Excuse me. Sister Morgan and I lived in an apartment about a 30 minute walk from where we served on the base. And uh, we, we lived in the city, not on the base. And early in the mission, uh, as we were walking, uh, over a, a couple of weeks time period, I recognized a young man who stared at me as he walked by. And he'd done that twice. And so the third time when I saw him, I moved over in front of him and introduced myself, and introduced us. And he said, I thought you must be missionaries. I'm a member of the church and have just recently arrived in Japan. Uh, we were able to establish a, a friendship with him and contact. We invited him to participate in the young single adult activities where Sister Morgan and I worked in the ward. Uh, he had not had uh, completely positive experiences in family and in, in his uh and with the church before he came to Japan. But nevertheless, he participated in our activities to the extent that his work schedule and, and his commitment uh, would allow. We were very grateful that uh, he stared at us. One day while I was serving in the Navy Marine Corps Relief Society office, a young lady sailor, a petty officer from one of the ships came in. She'd had a death in the family back in the States and didn't have enough money to buy a ticket to go home for the funeral. So I interviewed her and asked her where she needed to go. She said, Firth, Idaho. And I smiled and pointed at my name tag and said, then you understand what this name tag means, don't you? She smiled back and very shyly said, I'm a return missionary, but I'm not active. Because of the office circumstance and the, the fact that we were on the military installation, I was not able to pursue that any further other than to uh, approve the loan and arrange for a ticket home for her. Just a few weeks later, Sister Morgan and I had decided we wanted to go to Tokyo on the train. Uh, we came down in the elevator from our apartment and as I arrived at the lobby, I uh, looked at uh, Sister Morgan and said, I think we need more money for this trip. Wait here. And so I went back up to the apartment, got some more Japanese money that we had there and came back down and we then started to walk to the train station, which was only three to five minutes away. As we were walking, we bumped into this young sister. I was able to ask her how her family was and how the funeral was, and then invite her to our meetings and show her where they were. She responded to that encounter by attending church one day, but after that, she discontinued contact with us. I don't know what that encounter means to her, 
but I do know what it means to us. It was a tender mercy that testified to us of how closely our Father in Heaven uh, is aware of our activities and all that we're doing. You see, we didn't need that extra money that day. But we did, the Lord did need us to take a little extra time getting to the train station so that we could meet this sister. Most of our mission was filled with these kinds of coincidences that allowed us to represent the church and to recognize how much our Father in Heaven loves His children. We were asked when we were assigned this talk to tell how our mission brought us closer to the Savior. And I believe that's the right way to ask that question because you see, our, the Savior has been close to us through all of our lives. We've been so blessed by His influence and His attention to our lives. But our mission brought us closer to Him. We studied His life together. We studied the restoration of the gospel together. We were immersed in service to the children of our Father in Heaven. And our lives became testimonies of His grace. And for that, we're so grateful. Perhaps one of the important things to me about our service as missionary couple was the relationship that Sister Morgan and I enjoyed. Right at the beginning of our mission in October 2018 at the General Conference, in the women's session, President Russell M. Nelson spoke on sisters' participation in the gathering of Israel. And he said, quote, Women have a special gift, a divine endowment. You have the capacity to sense what someone needs and when he or she needs it. Your nature leads you to think of others first, to consider the effect that any course of action will have on others." Close quote. At that time, the Spirit bore a strong witness to me of the truth of what he said and told me that Sister Morgan would rise to that expectation and fulfill the words of the prophet. And it was true. Sister Morgan's ability to sense the service that was needed to understand what we might do in that service was a testimony to me throughout our entire missions. I testify that she saw and felt much more frequently and quickly than I ever did. And it was my privilege to be her assistant as we served the members of the ward, the stake, and the sailors and marines on the Navy base. God, our Father in heaven, and Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer, lead this great work of the gathering of Israel today. Joseph Smith is the prophet of the restoration. Russell M. Nelson is God's prophet on the earth today. And if we will hearken to his words, we will become closer to our Savior. I testify that this is true in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> I appreciate the opportunity to bear my testimony in this setting I never would have dreamed I would be in. We returned home from our mission on March 24th and have been in two weeks of quarantine since. As I watched General Conference and listened to the comforting words of our prophet, Russell M. Nelson, I felt such gratitude for this gospel of Jesus Christ. I feel such love and gratitude that Brother Morgan and I were given the opportunity to represent this church in a small way in the country of Japan. There are many highlights of our mission, but I will only mention a few. The opportunity to work with our young elders and sisters in the Yokosuka area is by far a great blessing in our lives. We met with them each Friday for district council and my love for their service in spreading the gospel in a foreign language will always be a treasured memory. The first Sunday without sacrament meeting, we received permission from our mission president to meet together with the missionaries that we might have a short fasting testimony meeting and be able to partake of the sacrament. 
And as we sat in that meeting and our, our young um, district leader got up and conducted that sacrament meeting, and then the, both of the elders in, in their turn knelt and blessed the sacrament. There was such a strong spirit in that meeting and the tears were, were flowing. We had the privilege of being back in a, a military ward and serving with those who serve our country. Many of these families have to say goodbye to their spouses for extended periods of time and be separated from loved ones. We had the opportunity of facilitating a resiliency class for families whose husbands were going to be deployed for five to six months at a time. We definitely learned more from them than they did from us. Many of the wives who attended, that, who attended the meeting have been down this road many times before. There were baptisms which were delayed until dad could get home. One father missed his daughter's graduation from high school and being able to say goodbye to her, she went off to college. Another brother was away from his family for two years because his son had medical issues that could not be treated in Japan. Right now, there are families in Yokosuka who are supposed to do a permanent change of station move and uh, we're preparing for that. Their household goods are gone or on a ship to the next destination, but they cannot leave and be, they cannot deploy or move at this time. Uh, we were also, as uh, Brother Morgan said, able to serve with the Navy Marine Corps Relief Society. And I also did work in the thrift store <coughs> where sailors and uh, family members could come in and buy items at a much reduced price that would help uh, with their budgets. I also worked as the client services associate in the office where I was able to provide loans for $500 or less at a 0% interest, whereas off base, these loans were going as high as 36%. Um, I pray that our service was a representation of our church in a positive way because we could not prophesy, we could only share our show our exa through example, only share through example. Last but not least was our newest convert, Jennifer, who was grateful for having found the gospel of Jesus Christ. Her previous life was a hard life. Down that road, which she says was so awful, not a life anyone would want to live. We were fortunate to be able to go to her apartment the last three weeks before we came home so that uh, Brother Morgan would be able to uh, bless and pass the sacrament to us. And it, when we first got there, he asked if she would be willing to give an opening prayer to start our meeting. As she started her prayer, she said, thank you, thank you, thank you for this gospel. Tears again came to my eyes with her heartfelt love for her newfound religion. Following President Nelson's admonition, I found a new love and appreciation for the prophet Joseph Smith and for my savior, Jesus Christ, to study in prayer. We were blessed to serve this mission in Japan and the memories will always be treasured. Grateful for the blessings that I have and grateful for the gospel and, and the opportunity to serve. And I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen.